What's up, guys? Welcome back to another edition of Nintendo Stories. The only place on the internet, I would think, where yeah. you, you can get a behind the scenes as to what happened on uh, uh, some of the most famous Nintendo commercials. Uh, we did Super Smash Brothers, which was our first one. Right. We're, we're the only people that have built costumes in the United States of for Nintendo. That's right. That's right. I, I think there might be some companies in China that that built them for other purposes. Yeah, but not for stuff. commercials. But for the commercials, uh, KCL Productions, which is Kathy and I, uh, primarily I handle the business. And Kathy builds all the costumes uh, with her team, which consists of sometimes three or four people. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. Yeah, not a big crew. So today we'd like to present to you another commercial that we did. This is in 2002. This was for Animal Crossing, which that's was right. really fun. Yeah. It was really blast, a blast. Um, and this shoot took place up in Vancouver. We, uh, uh, we build here in Malibu, California. Kathy's shop is in the back of our home here in Malibu. And the company is KCL Productions. Uh, there's the website, kclproductions.com. We also do uh, children's coloring books, which consists of car books and sea life books, uh, a part of our cadre of things. But today we're talking about Animal Crossing and um, uh, we're going to go through some of the build aspects, uh, some of the things that you did to put the costumes together in dealing with the client, which uh, was a combination of Nintendo and the ad agency, Leo Burnett in Chicago. Right. right. They're awesome. Yeah. Both of them. Absolutely. And Nintendo's wonderful, and so are Leo Burnett. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So we had a really good time. This was over a about a, a decade period. We did about 30 commercials. Mm -hmm. And this one was in 2002. Uh, we were contracted by Leo Burnett to, um, uh, to do, uh, do, do Animal Crossing. I believe we got this job when we were in Vancouver shooting another spot. Number one, let's kind of right out of the gate. What is your fondest memory of the shoot for uh, Animal Crossing? Well, actually, it was the first time our son got to work with us. Mm -hmm. He, at the time, was only 16, and I needed, you know, it was Tim and myself on set, and we needed one more person. And I asked uh, Leo Burnett if they'd be willing to have our son come work. And he was so great. I said, when you have character people in costumes, you have to take care of your character. Usually it's one person for one costume. In this case, we had five costumes with three of us. But that was doable. You can watch two people or, you know, we can work that out. But anyways, it was a great experience to bring your son, you know, yep. on location, yep. doing the career that you do. And coincidentally now, he's a sculptor in the movie industry. Right. So He works on uh, movies like Venom and yeah, uh, big Marvel big movies, ones. Star Wars, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's get into it. Uh, the, the first couple of shots here on our left, we have a photo reference for ourselves, which you guys will see as we're discussing it. Uh, first shot of you and I wearing some uh, fat suits. Uh, yeah. There was five characters, which were, four of them were the main characters in the game of Animal Crossing, and one was a raccoon. Oh, yeah. He's not a main character. Well, he's a main character, but he doesn't look like the rest of them. Right. You know. Right. You know. the The joke was that that when we were building these, uh, they had these ball hands, and uh, and every time we got excited about something, we'd scream ball hands, and ball it was hands. and it was just not something that was practical in any way. Uh, no. For, for the game, they they existed in their world and they did their stuff, but they couldn't grab anything because their oh, hands I know. were made out of balls, you know. I think there was a scene where one of them was cooking this big fake fish on a barbecue, yeah. and we had to put the fish between his little ball hands because he couldn't you know, pick up the fish. So uh, this whole process, how long did the whole process take, do you think, do you remember? Uh, I'm just going to guess, because each costume usually takes two to three weeks, so we probably had a month. Yeah, a little bit of a month, maybe a little bit more. Uh, we went yeah. up and we shot, uh, I believe, only for one day. Yeah. Uh, we were on set in a soundstage. They had the entire um, uh, uh, home of these guys built uh, to scale. So it was pretty cool to, to see, to walk yeah, in the set and see that. Yeah, there was the bedroom. Mm -hmm. There was the backyard, the tree, right, and then there was a living room right. where they watched TV. Right, exactly. You start uh, out with, with with the drawings. We did full-size drawings. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see here, the drawings for each character, and that gives them an idea of how what the scale is like in proportion yeah. to a regular human. Right. And then from there, you would go to what? From there, I start making the shapes out of a soft foam mm -hmm. so that I can just play with it change the shapes, put cheeks, move the cheeks, move the ears, 
And after it's been approved, and I feel good, we move into the next level of foam, which is called L200. It's a firm foam, which we have to cut on the bandsaw, sort of like your boogie board. Right. Not exactly, but sort of. So all the heads were done out of L200 and some of the uh, accoutrement-like uh, feet, maybe things like that. But a big part of this one also was the clothing. We had to go mm -hmm. through a whole process of having clothing approved and fabrics. We did, yeah. <clears throat> but this is some of the fabric patterns uh, that they had to choose from and we had to go and, and uh, based on the characters because when you when you play the video game, you can't really see that well detail. You can see a little mishmash right. of color and stuff, but it's not detailed enough to be able to say that's that fabric. So, right, but also to do custom fabric would cost them a fortune. Right. So no you have time to pick either. something. Yeah, no time to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to pick something close, and they turned out amazing. Now we built. We didn't build this here in Malibu at the time. We had a shop in Santa Monica, which was, if you guys are familiar with. Santa Monica area, the Ore House, which was a bar at that time. Yeah. We had the second floor of the Ore House and all, pretty much all the Nintendo characters were built uh, uh, above the yeah. Ore House, above yeah. that bar. Yeah. And every night, uh, especially on the weekends, if we worked late, the <laughs> bar was pounding. It was yeah. unbelievable. You well, uh, you didn't have to worry about falling asleep. No, you couldn't make <laughs> phone calls. Uh, you you uh, uh, you could barely get your work done. But actually, a couple of times we tried to sleep there because I worked till midnight and yeah. thought, oh well, let's just sleep here and then we'll get up and start working. Yeah. Impossible. If, if you did it fall asleep, fun, it was it was the vibration that vibrated your brain mm -hmm. on the ground. Yeah. Um, but uh, it wasn't uncommon for us to pull, uh, not all-nighters, but super late nights for a lot of these things. Yeah. They were very expensive costumes, so they were, they were very, uh, uh, very good to do with these guys. Plus, uh, Leo Burnett would contact us and many times ask us where we wanted to shoot things uh, when we were available. Uh, and uh, uh, Kathy got very in tight with, uh, with Leo Burnett. And we had a lot of fun uh, building these guys and a lot of other ones, which we'll get into more in terms of stories as, as we evolve with this. You know, a little side story is that Leo Burnett is based out of Chicago. And Chicago is one of my favorite cities. Building for Leo Burnett is right on the Chicago River. So we're taking some little tour one time down the Chicago River. And they say, on your right is the Leo Burnett building, and we're yeah. like, oh my god, how cool is that? We were waiting for them to say uh, where the uh, Animal Crossing costumes were. Probably looking out yeah. of some window. <laughs> right. We've had a lot of clients over the years, and by far, Leo Burnett was always the best, oh, the yeah. nicest people. Yeah. Really seemed to enjoy what, what they did for a living, so. Yeah. Uh, there's a great shot of your, your shop my and shop. the disaster of what it looked like. Yeah, you so. never have time to clean up, mm -hmm. so. You kind of build around and push things aside. So once we arrived in uh, in Vancouver, all the costumes had to be shipped through customs. So we they had to be had to be sent out uh, way earlier than when before we left. So like a week. most of them would arrive there before we get there, and everything would be on set. Uh, and and Leo Burnett would treat us like gold. They pick us up in a limousine, mm -hmm. put us in an amazing um, hotel. Uh, this particular commercial. Uh, we did not wear the costumes. They actually had right. actors for all of them. They were after actors. They weren't SAG and they, you know, we weren't mm. puppeteers like what we normally do. Now, normally I wear Super Mario. Uh, Bob wears uh, Luigi. You have done Princess Peach and, yeah. a, and a variety of other ones. Um, I've done uh, Yoshi. So most of the commercials that you see, if you see Super Mario, it's generally myself uh, or Yoshi, those two. Uh, Bob's a bit taller than me, so he was great for, for Luigi. Right, he's but, tall and skinny, just yeah. like Luigi. But in this case, for, for Animal Crossing, they had actors to perform and to do all that stuff. What's interesting, though, is one of the reasons we will wear the costumes is because actors have actually never been in these costumes. They are hot, they are stuffy, and you don't want to put someone in and have them freak out and have an asthma attack or claustrophobic. And they do, they do. And he can wear them and not complain because he knows it's in our best interest to make the costume work really well. Yeah, as, well, as a puppeteer, you're thinking about, you know, uh, what the client is seeing when they're looking at you and how your your performers, your, your individual performances with your arms and legs have to be much more exaggerated than you would normally Right, do. and a normal actor, at first they act really stiff. Oh, I can't move in this costume. Yeah. But we know otherwise. You know, Tim has actually made a wallet come to life. 
that's on a whole different subject. Especially if it's full of money, it's not yeah. hard to do. No, yeah. I think that was for a uh, Pizza Hut commercial. Right. But if you're a performer, if you're a mascot performer, or if you're doing um, uh, some of the co conventions as a cosplayer, then it's important to recognize that you're no longer that person wearing a costume. You are actually that character. Yeah. And you have to really go extreme with your, your movements uh, to sell that idea. And the more that you do that, the better performance you have. You had to do yoga in a Yoshi costume. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> we went to, actually, this is, this is another story that we'll do, but we went to Athens and we went out on a cruise ship and I did a yoga class with a bunch of ladies. Yeah. Um, and it was, uh, it was fun. Uh, and uh, why we went to Athens to do that, I don't know. But once again, it was Leah Burnett saying, yeah. hey, you want to go to Athens? And we're, we're like, like okay. <laughs> Our goal was always, once we arrive in Vancouver, we had to go two places. We had to find a really good coffee shop, and we had to go to Robson and get a, a veggie hot dog. They actually have hot dog stands that have veggie hot dogs. Yeah. And since we're vegan, that was wonderful. It was awesome. Uh, here's a great shot of the crew, uh, yeah. all the actors, and uh, everyone just had a really great time. Once again, it was one of those things that you can't believe that you're doing this because you're you're playing a, a silly character in a Nintendo game, but you know that there are millions of you guys that that love playing these games and love uh, seeing these characters. And to see that full size uh, on a full size set was just an extraordinary experience. Well, and another thing that's kind of weird, sort of like, sounds like I'm patting myself on the back, but there was one point where I was looking at the video monitor of what they were filming and I went, is this the real uh, game footage? Yeah. And I realized it was my costumes. So, you know, not to say how awesome I am, but they looked really awesome. <laughs> yeah, and hats off to the, the art director and the, the prop people and all the people that put this together because they really sold the idea oh, yeah. of the environment of the world because you guys oh, have yeah. a very high standard uh, for how uh, how the game looks, which is why you're big fans. And I, I we figured that with Animal Crossing, uh, there was a lot of really interesting aspects to them as well as the characters. They're very funny and lots of fun things to do. Yeah. So um, uh, here's a great shot of the raccoon taking a picture. They even <laughs> built that prop camera there, which is pretty fun. There's a shot here of uh, one of us bringing a head to a guy who's laying in a hammock. You cannot keep people in costumes longer than 20 minutes. Sometimes shorter if, if you can do that because in between camera shots, take them out of the costume so that they can breathe. And it, you know, that is really an important thing. Right, and that's uh, uh, part of uh, Disney's policy as well, is that if anytime you go to see those, uh, those mascots running around Disney, uh, if uh, if you're you're interacting with them, generally uh, they are 20 minutes on, right. 20 minutes and off. And there's always a person nearby that's a right. Disney person, right? Because it does get hot in there, and people, you know, aren't always nice to mascots at Disneyland. <laughs> no. We don't have to worry about that here on set, but we take care of our people. So that's what we got for you guys uh, today. Animal Crossing back in 2002. Uh, uh, all the information on, on the shoot and the build and things like that. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you check out some of our coloring books, you can go on Amazon. It's under Fireball Coloring Books. You can see some of the things that we do there. Uh, we always have other projects. Kathy is currently working on a costume for Buddy Cruise, which is a client in Florida mm -hmm. uh, that takes um, uh, kids out and their families uh, out on cruises, right? Well, it's uh, kids that have Down. autism yeah, and Downs. Downs. Yeah. Right. So uh, really great company. So you can check them out online as well. But uh, uh, Kathy's company, KCL Productions, we have a Facebook page. Uh, my name is Fireball and uh, uh, we're all over online. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you did, hopefully you guys will consider sharing it with other gamers, other people that enjoy um, playing Nintendo games. And uh, we will see you on the next Nintendo story.